prevail. To prevail is, is what life is all about, really. And, you know, as a pilot, if you happen to get up right on a little bit of altitude and you're flying against the wind, sometimes that old jet stream will give you 100 knots. Well, if your airspeed is only 100 knots, you're going to stand still. Whereas if you turn and go with the prevailing wind, your 100 knots plus 100 knots, you're doing 200 knots. Or, which I've got a little bit of experience with sailing a, ship, a boat out on waters. And if you're going into the wind, you got to tack and tack and jib and jib and tack. But if you fall around and go with the wind, have it aft of you, I mean, you're just going to sail right on. And do you know something? In your life today, the Holy Spirit is the wind in your sails. I did a documentary down near Georgia that it was in the Ogham stated that the Holy Spirit was the sails that brought us to this country. And how fascinating it was. So you have a choice in this life. You can prevail and go with God or you can fight a battle upstream all your life if you choose to. Just paddle, 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 all right? Or you can go with him, that Holy Spirit, let him lead you. He takes care of a whole bunch of troubles. You can prevail with him. To prevail means to be able to contend. It means strength. It means power. I'm just speaking of the Greek word that's translated prevail. And it just has all sorts of aids in overcoming. And that's what God does for you. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. We're going to pick it up here with verse 11. And verse 11 of chapter 19, and it reads... And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. God, it's still God doing it, but Paul was his servant. Verse 12, so that from his body were brought into the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. God cleanses. Uh, verse 13 of chapter 19, book of Acts. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, that, that means the Kenites that claim to be of, of Judah, exorcists, that means witch doctors, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. I mean, it worked for Paul, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. That's the one we're, we're doing this from. 14. And there were seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priest, which did so. But he's a, a witch doctor priest, got it? And uh, so it is, 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? Who do you think you are? Now, when you don't utilize the power of the Lord Jesus Christ in total faith and knowledge, if you start messing with evil spirits, don't think they don't know. They know. And they know who has the presence of God and who doesn't. So what do they do? Verse 16, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on, leapt on them and overcame them. And prevailed, there's our word, prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. I mean, don't mess around with Christ. If you, you either love him or you don't, you can't con people. Okay? They're playing church and they got bit. Okay? Verse 17, and this was known to all the Jews and Greeks, that's to say Gentiles, also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. In other words, God used the prevailing of the evil spirit to further Paul's work. Yeah, you have it. You have God or you don't. You've got the Holy Spirit in your sails or you don't. 
you're either going with the wind or you're pumping upstream. It's so much easier to love him and let him use you. 18, and many that believe came and confessed, showing their deeds. 19, many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver, a million bucks okay, of junk, false teaching, misleading people. Verse 20, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. God's word will always prevail if you will study, if you will be rightly divided, if you will show yourself approved where no evil spirit could overcome you or your family. You've got it under control. And uh, certainly that's having the Holy Spirit when you have him with you, for you, then who can be against you? No one. They may ruffle your feathers. They may give you a hard time, but you will always prevail in Christ because that means you are able, that um, uh, you, uh, you, are, you have the power and the strength to prevail. So now go with me to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, and we're going to pick it up with uh, verse 13 here. Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus um, came into the coast of Caesarea, Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, uh, that I, the Son of Man, am? Now, Son of Man is the title Christ used when he was in the flesh walking the earth. Okay. I'll say it again. Son of Man is the title used when Christ is in the flesh body walking on this earth. Okay. And, uh, and so it is. Verse 14. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, uh, some Elias, they think you're Elijah. The others, Jeremiah, they think you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. 15, and he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? I want to know. Verse 16, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he laid it right on the line. Verse 17, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Barjona means the son of the dove. And naturally where Simon means a hearing and son of the dove means you're, you heard from the Holy Spirit, didn't you? That's what it means. This is having the Holy Spirit in your sails. He can lead you, guide you, and direct you. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. The, through the Holy Spirit, he was encouraged and came forth. 18, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and, and this is rock, Petrus. And upon this rock, uh, this uh, Petros is Peter's name, Petra. This is an unmovable rock. This is Christ. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And there's our word prevailing. You want to be on the right team and you want to have the Holy Spirit in your sails. You want to be going with him, not against him. Now, did, did he give Peter the keys to hell? No, he didn't. He said that... Uh, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Christ has the key to the gates of hell and he's about to make a trip there after the crucifixion. Verse 19, but what does he have to give the keys to? 19, and I will give the, unto thee the keys of the kingdom. That's the king and the dominion of heaven. 
And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shalt thou loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In other words, in Christ's name, that church, if you bring people to the Savior, and they are saved, if you loose them from the bounds of this earth, it's sin and coming short and so on and so forth, then you, they're going to also be loosed in heaven. Their salvation is good in heaven as well as it is in earth, uh, accomplished by the church. And what is that church again? It's Christ. When Christ releases you through his servants, if, even if you're still on the earth, you overcome and you have that loosing even in heaven. So he's got the keys there. And when you unlock heaven and open Christ's kingdom, he rent that veil from top to bottom on the Holy of Holies and said, if you really love me and if you believe me, you come on in. You don't need some preacher. You don't need some high priest. Come to me. And there you have it. He gives you that key when you believe and when you know him. But you can't play games. You've got to have that Holy Spirit and you've got to go with him. Don't ever fight against God. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your life. Always pray and understand. Bring him into the equation of your life. Follow what he would tell you, what he leads you. And the letter he has written you, giving you instruction on how to prevail. It's, it's a lot... It's a lot more fun to prevail than to lose. Okay. It's a lot more fun to overcome than it is to, to, to fail totally and miserably your family, your community, and God. That, that's terrible. You do not, you never do you want to go there. Now, let's, uh, let's go, if we may, next to the book of Ephesians. You'll remember that um, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 4, God says to his election, I chose you before the foundations of this earth age. You have God's ability to foreordain or to forelead his election, to lead them into the truth. And, and much of that destiny is spoken of here. And, but we're going to drop on down to verse 17 in this same uh, chapter, Ephesians chapter one, verse 17. And it, and it reads that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Where, where does that come from? It comes from God. And do you know something? It's a gift to you if you seek, if you find if you pray about it, if you give God the glory, and if you search for that wisdom to know and understand that truth. Verse 18, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And, and so it is that these elect do have an inheritance. You want to collect that. You want to claim it. It's a promise from God. It's a beautiful thing. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? This is the one of the words we came here. To usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. The first power here is dunamis. is where our word dynamite comes from. That kind of power. The next power is your ability to get it done, like to prevail. Okay. So that's an awesome power that he gives you if you plug into it. Well, how do I do that? Well, like he said, by praying for the wisdom and the understanding and the revelation. Well, what is this revelation? It lets you know what's going to happen. It lets you know what he expects from you. What, what, will, what will transpire in this world? 
that you have the ability to fulfill the promise that uh, he brings simply for the taking for those that will listen, that will search and find that beautiful truth, how precious it is. Uh, verse 20 to continue. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. This is why you have, you have a, a, an advocate right there at God's right hand to protect you, to assist you. It doesn't get any better than that. Talk about wind in your sails. Talk about the ability to overcome. That's where it comes from. 21, for above all principality, listen to me, and power. That means even um, supernatural in the heavenly places, even if you would. That's what the principalities are. Fallen angels, the devil himself, and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. The fallen angels, the whole bit, you got power over them. You cannot imagine how important this is for this moment, for this time, that you plug into that power, that ability to prevail in his name, even against Satan himself, even against the witch doctors themselves, the demons themselves, false teachers themselves. By what? By adhering and absorbing the real word of God. For it is the word that, um, that we hang to both in this one and that that is to come. 22, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. He's it. Okay. So don't try to get along without him. Don't try to push against the stream. He tells you how it's going to be. If you go with that flow, you're going to be blessed. Verse 23 to complete, which is his body. The church is his body. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. It fills everything, everywhere. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. When you have that Holy Spirit in your presence, how, how can you go wrong? Again, I want to emphasize again, when you go back in to, in to Ephesus here, especially in verse 4, and you find out that he's talking here to those he chose before the foundations of this world. Do you know something? He counts on his servants. He expects them to understand the revelation. He expects them to know they've got a witness and they've got a witness against the false one. And that false one will mislead. He will send his own little angels. And that's why it is extremely important that you understand how important, especially at this time, to have the Holy Spirit with you, in you, and around you. You might say, well, why is it so important? Because evil spirits will run from you. Satan himself will run from you. Why? They're afraid of you. Well, why are they afraid of me? Because you have Christ in you. That is to say the Holy Spirit, the Holy Hurrah. And they know with a command that you can send them back where they came from in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of Yeshua. Then they must depart. They have no choice. They're afraid of you. Now, if one lives in this time when it's very actual, I mean, it's a fact, that Michael's going to throw that whole bunch out of heaven again. They're coming here. That's what makes it more important than ever because he's depending on you to see that the record is kept and that you make your stand, that you stand against him, and you will prevail. 
because you follow the prevailing one. That is to say the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ. We live in a precious time. Many of the prophets wanted to live today when these end times were consummating as Christ gave us the message in Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13. They didn't live at this time, but they wanted to. Well, you do. Why? Because God's election, that generation was saved for now. First will be last and the last will be first. First chosen will be last. Why? Because that's when Satan's coming. You did it before. You stood against him. He knows you can cut it. And he knows you'll do it again. So uh, it is ever, ever important that you be able to understand his teachings and the revelation and, and speaking of his revelation, let's go to Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. Let's make it 5-5. Five, five. Let's pick it up with the verse, the fifth verse. Um, this is when the seven seals were brought. You ever heard of them? What are the seals? The seals are what you're supposed to have in your mind when you're prevailing. They're written for anyone to understand. And you're supposed to be able to recognize them as they come to pass. But before they were opened, who opened them for us? Uh, verse 5, chapter 5, Revelation. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. I mean, he was crying because no one could understand. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed. He always prevails. To open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. They are loosed. Have you absorbed them? You know, the seals come first. That's why God said in Revelation chapter 7, stop the end until the election have been sealed in their foreheads with the truth of what's going to happen so they know how to interact, react, and to act. <clears throat> Verse 6, And I beheld, I looked, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, this would be better translated the four living creatures, this is the zoon, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And naturally, that's symbolic of the 7,000 of God's elect and the leader thereof, which is to say he that prevails and he expects you to prevail through them. Verse 7, And he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. 8, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts, the living creatures, and four and twenty elders, that's the patriarchs and the apostles, fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, and which are the prayers of the saints. Do you know where your prayers go? Do you know who? Well, he never hears my prayer. Don't give me that. They're bottled. They're kept. They're thought over. And when the time is right, guess what? Bingo. It happens. So, and this is that time that God's elect will go into action. <clears throat> Verse 9, and they sung a new song, not an old one. A new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. In other words, all that are supposed to hear the kings and queens of the ethnos, the election, and Israel that are supposed to hear, are going to hear. Because Christ through the Holy Spirit, allows you to prevail when you do what he says, when you absorb the seals, when you read the word and when you absorb it, the book, the, this book, verse 10, and has made us unto our God kings and priests. That's how he looks at you. 
and we shall reign on the earth, speaking of the millennium, of course, as it comes. 11, and I beheld, I looked again, and I heard the voice of many angels uh, round about the throne and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 10, times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Do you understand what's above our head to make things come to pass if you have the wind in your sails that's called the Holy Spirit? Do you know how much power is really there? It would be a frightening thing. Do you understand why Satan runs from you? He knows the power that is there and the power that is for God's election when they have the faith and the belief to use it to stand forth with it, having absorbed the seals, knowing the truth. And it would be like old Elisha when he and just his armor bearer faced a whole enemy, an army. In, in 2 Kings chapter 6, what is it, verse 17, and Elisha says, God, just open the heavens there and let him see this army that's right up above us. And he said, oh boy, let's go. Because there was chariots, there was warriors, you see, we don't have anything to worry about. Father's on the throne, the son's with him, and he encourages us. Verse 12, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, to receive, you wanna know what those seven spirits are? Don't ever let it get away from you, count them. Power, one, and riches, two, and wisdom three, and strength four, and honor five, and glory six, and blessings seven. That's all of them. That's the spirit that God's election carried and you can always spot one of them because of it. It's a precious thing to have the right wind in your sails, to prevail in life because you believe because he has chosen and because you earned it, even in the first earth age, how precious it is. 13, and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. Not just part time, my friend. We're in forever and ever here. One more verse to complete. And the four beasts said, Amen. Meaning, what does Amen mean in the, in the Greek tongue or Hebrew? That's that. End of story. That is that. Final. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him and li that lived forever and ever. And so it is that our Father leads his own, our Father uses his own. Thumb on ahead to the 12th chapter of this great book of um, Revelation. Chapter 12 in the book of Revelation covers a longer period of time than any other chapter in the Bible. It starts out in the world that was. It gives you Satan's power as he fell as the protecting cherub in Ezekiel 24. And how that in verse uh, 3 and 4 that he drew a third of God's children away from God. And naturally fell and God sent a savior. But what I'm most interested in to complete this lecture is what happens at the end and what happens to you. There's going to be a great war in heaven. I'm sure that the, 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 the rustling has already started. The, the uh, fight is about to happen. And I know who's gonna win because I know who prevails. The question is, do you wanna prevail? If you do, you'll stay with he who is the prevailer. That is to say the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse seven of chapter 12. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels, what happened? Verse eight, and prevail not. Neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. 
Satan always loses. You got that in your mind? Don't ever try to let him deceive you or follow, uh, promise you things because he can't fulfill it. He's a liar and the father of it. When Michael and his angels hit him, he failed. He was, his, his tenure in heaven was over. His holding place is actually what it amounts to. And Michael's the one that's got the key that holds him. Verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, this is all of his names, the serpent in the garden, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Now, how much of the world did he deceive? The whole world. Well, brother, you're teaching all this and you're wasting your time because we're all going to fly away. Oh, well, have a good trip. You know, you're, you're, I hope you're not going to be disappointed. It's much better to prevail. Why? Because you do it God's way, okay? He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Both the fallen angels that seduced the daughters of Adam in Genesis chapter 6. This is why Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 10, a woman wants to keep Christ over her head because of the angels. They're coming back. And this is why Jesus would teach in Matthew 24. It's going to be just like it was in the days of Noah. They're going to be giving and taking in marriage again. With who? The fallen angels. The deception is coming. And I heard a loud voice, in he a voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, that power always there. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Who do you think accuses you? Do you understand that's what the whole book of Job was about? It's how that Satan accuses even you before God. It's going to be gone. It's going to be right down here in person. Verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Who is death? Satan. You, you, you're not afraid of him and you don't have to worry about him. It doesn't mean a literal death. But again, how did you prevail? How did you overcome? By the blood of the Lamb. Christ crucified. Well, what does it mean, Christ crucified? Who did it? Why did they do it? And what do they expect you to gain from it? Don't be deceived in these end times by the Kenites. Verse 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and you that dwell in them, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Do you have to be afraid of that? Absolutely not. You know why? He's afraid of you. He knows what will happen to him if he contends with you. And when you witness before him, he will know who's speaking. It won't be you, it will be the Holy Spirit. Verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, that's Mother Israel, which brought forth the man-child, which gave birth to Christ. Uh, symbolically speaking, 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time, a time and time, half time uh, from the face of the serpent. Three and a half years, shortened to five months now and shortened even to a two and a half month period. How precious God is that he loves his own. Verse 15, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Do, do you know what that water is? It's lies. False teaching. Do you have to be afraid of a flood of lies? Of course you don't. Why? Because you have the truth because you have the prevailing wind in your sails. And that prevailing wind is the Holy Spirit that has power over all these people. And he stands by you. He protects you. He leads you. He guides you. You have nothing to fear but fear itself. Don't ever let that happen to you. A brave man dies once. A coward dies a thousand deaths. See that that 
you don't fall in that category. You're a prevailer. Act like it. 16. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. God always protects his own. He controls nature. That that is natural, he takes care of us. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Well, why did he make war with them? Because he had everybody else eaten out of his hand. They were, he was loading his bus to fly them away. But you're going to stand against him. Why? Because you're going to prevail. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for giving us the ability to prevail. Father, you make it so easy for us who believe and have the faith to know that all your promises are for us this day to claim and to exercise, to understand the seals and what's about to happen and see that we're good, worthy servants to thy cause and benefit that we all prevail who have have earned it. In Jesus' precious name, Yeshua. Amen, amen, amen. Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. My, my name is Peggy, and I just want to tell you that I receive so much blessings from your servant. Well, thank you. It's God's Word. He'll do it for us. I would like to ask you to pray for me and my family. My son just finished boot camp at Paris Island, South Carolina, for the Marine Corps. He graduates as a PFC. I am so proud of him and have a lot of respect for servicemen and women. My oldest brother was a Marine, and my daddy was in the Army. I respect his, you being a Marine too. Well, thank you. It was it, Serving the nation is uh, a great uh, privilege. I have learned a lot from my daddy, my brother, my son, and you. Uh, discipline is a beautiful thing. I would like to hear some scripture on how to keep my faith strong. Um, well, you're, you're so very welcome, and uh, thank you for the comment, and congratulations to your son from uh, making it through Paris Island. He's, he's now a man. Um, he's now a Marine. Okay, um, I, you know, I think today's lecture would be a good one. We walk by faith. That, but a scripture that is so strengthening to me and to many others is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. God will always see you, give you a way out. Um, uh, Anita from Texas, please explain to me the way the time for Antichrist is shortened to five and a half months. Not five and a half, five months, okay? Somehow I have missed it. Is the time in, okay, you, it's the time of the locust, true. But you'll find it <clears throat> in Revelation chapter 9. Now, you are because he is identified there in two separate languages and as the son of perdition, but as a babdon in the Hebrew tongue and a polion in the Greek tongue, both being destroyer, which, which is Satan's main name. He will destroy if we give him the opportunity. Uh, Nancy from Washington, I have heard a pastor state the only way you you know you have been saved is if you speak in tongues. He teaches when you receive the Holy Spirit, 
you will speak in tongues. If you do not, you are not saved. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I have to disagree with him. In the first place, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the word unknown tongues means that it is in the Greek tongue, it means a language you were not born with a foreign language you were not born with, for what purpose? To take the Word of God. Not with jabber, but with understanding, so that people can understand. He said, if, if, you, if you do not have that language in your mind, if you're not bilingual where you can take that language there, you better take an interpreter with you, or they won't even know when to say amen and you'll be like a horn playing without harmony. It won't, it won't make any sense to them. That's just common sense. <clears throat> now, probably what he's referring to is the Pentecostal tongue. And he shows his ignorance. Because you will not find the term unknown connected with the Pentecostal tongue. It's just the opposite. The beauty of the Pentecostal tongue in Acts chapter 2 is that it came out clearly and plainly, not jabber, in every language of the world. Whatever your language was, if you were Chinese, you heard it in Chinese. And, um, and if you heard it in Japanese, you were Japanese. And so English, English, Spanish, Spaniards. So it all comes out. That's why it's called cloven. Man can't do it. It is the Holy Spirit that does it, and it does not happen until we're delivered up before the false Messiah, when both sons and daughters will speak through him. But, but it is good to be bilingual. It is good to learn another language to deliver God's word to a people that need to hear it. That's the beauty of Paul's work. Uh, but And I mean no disrespect, and I'm not judging your man there, but... Uh, uh, he doesn't know what he's talking about, I'm sorry to say. Melinda from Louisiana. What does the Bible say about it is okay to sue someone if you lend money to that, to that and now they refuse to pay you back? Well, you know, the Bible does insist that if we're dealing with Christians, that you go to uh, another Christian and ask them to intercede. And if that doesn't do it, you go to the church and get somebody to arbitrate that both of you can trust. And if, because it's better, rather than paying a bunch of lawyers to where it will cost you more than whoever, what the damage was to begin with. But if you loan somebody money and they refuse to pay it back, period, then they're not a Christian. So you can sue them. Biblically, you can sue them. So that's, that's your choice. Um, Herminia from uh, California. Thank you for your teaching. I've learned so much and I'm studying with you. But Sunday, I asked my first lady, did she believe in the rapture? And she said yes, but it's in the, the word rapture is not in the Bible. So I asked her, uh, two are in the field and one is taken and one is left. Which one do you want to be? The first one taken or the one left? And uh, she said, the first one taken. And I said, the first one, I said, God comes at the seventh trump, not the sixth. And, and um, the first one taken is taken by Antichrist. And most everybody I ask, they want to be taken as the first one. Well, Herminia, that's unfortunately lack of teaching and scholarship in this world. Because a child, if they'll take Matthew uh, 24 and Mark 13 and read it carefully, the subject is, by Christ's teaching, the false Christ shall come. Not maybe, he shall come first. And if they tell you he's here, there, or yon, don't believe it. And then in Matthew 24, it says one, two will be in the field. Naturally, who's the first one taken? By Antichrist. So um, you're awakening to a real truth that some teaching can be rather dangerous to certain people. Barbara from Georgia. 
I have attended a church with my family since 2000. I feel very uncomfortable going to this church now because of the teaching. I also live with my family, and I am concerned about what they will do to our relation will do to our relationship, since they are very active there. After watching you and following you through the scripture, I can no longer attend that church, especially the way they um, celebrate Easter with the bunnies and eggs and so forth. They don't even know about Cain and Abel, uh, their births. Um, Plus Adam's genealogy, I can't understand how preachers miss that part of the scripture. Please excuse my spelling. I'm 75, and I never did know how to spell. Well, I think you're doing real good, um, and and th you're very welcome for the program. We enjoy bringing it to you. You know, uh, family is family, and I, I always like to protect family if it's at all possible and where you live with them, be very cautious. It's possible if God has placed a conviction on you, you have to listen to God. I believe what I teach. I think that God directs his elect what they should do and what they should not do. So you are the one that must make that decision. But uh, thank you for knowing truth and recognizing truth. But do love your family and maybe that uh, by living that life, uh, you can set an example for the Mark from Nebraska. Question, does the word woe in 5.8 mean a condition of grief or condition brought, uh, oh, Isaiah 5.8, brought on by sin? We live in rural Nebraska and are aware of the United Nations policy, um, Agenda 21, that has been picked up by our go present government to relocate rural folks to public housing projects in the city. Our concern is, do we resist this move if it should come or if we do not, would, if we would let God fault us as sinners? We're not gonna let that happen. The American people are a free people. We're, we're not going to allow our government, we'll get rid of whatever government we've got if they try to let the United Nations take over this nation. We're not gonna, the American people as an old Marine, as an old combat Marine, I can guarantee you the American people would not stand for that. And uh, we're just not going to let it happen, so don't waste too much time worrying about it. Um, we're a nation of the people, by the people, and for the people. And I, I thank God for that. Uh, Donna from North Carolina. Question, have you ever thought about publishing a Bible that actually explains in footnotes exactly what the scriptures and manuscripts have to say? Are there any Bibles printed that uh, that bring this, these points out? The King James, not, not uh, you know, the Companion Bible is what I recommend because of the appendix and because of the aids it gives you. But... Um, uh, sometime, if if, when, if I ever come to the age where I decide to retire, I'm, I might do that. Uh, but uh, at this present time, in teaching God's Word every day of the week, being your weekly pastor, uh, uh, six days a week and taking care of our conversation on every other weekend, um, I'm pretty well tied down for now. And with the technology that we have going around the world at this time and being able to communicate openly, then kind of that's the way God has led us to do at this time. But when I get ready to retire, I might just do that. Thank you. Edna from Michigan. I enjoy your teaching. You explain the Bible so well. I've, well, thank you for that. I've, I've, I've learned a lot from your teaching. I have a question about women preachers in the pulpit because Explain, I know you say you don't judge, but I would like to know, is it right or wrong? Well, if, if God calls somebody to preach, I'm not going to get in their way. I am a student of God's Word, and I know that where it says a woman should be silent, the word silent in the Greek is chatter. Men should not chatter. Women should not chatter. Children should not chatter in church. But there were many women teachers in church. Huldah in the Old Testament was head of the, 
the, of God's University of Teaching Bible. She, she was the head mistress of the University of Teachers. So you can't say women are not supposed to teach. And Nathan had four virgin daughters. There wasn't some man helping them teach because they were all virgins. And they were all prophetess. God used them. God's going to use whomever he chooses. I, I know sometimes man would like to limit. Um, but it makes it real easy to say women should stay in their place. Well, it's where's their place? It's where God puts them. There's been some fantastic women in the Bible. And I want to tell you something. When Paul signs off on many of his salutations, if you understand the Greek uh, masculine feminine, then you realize there was more women helping him than there were men in the church. So uh, you want to be real careful and, and um, I always kind of believe in letting God lead. If God chooses somebody and they have the ability, hey, more horsepower to them. Way to go. Latonia, Latonia from uh, Indiana. What would you say would it be the it would be good to read from our Father's Word to help me and my family get through with a loved one, our dad slowly breaking down mind and body when you know time is coming soon? Thank you for all your family and God bless you and your family and staff. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, well, you know, growing old is, uh, uh, is part of, uh, of um, the transition to being with our Father. I, I would recommend Ecclesiastes chapter 12 read up, uh, where it says, hey, you know, when we get older, our, the teeth don't grind as good as they used to. Our hearing's not what it used to be. And when that silver cord parts, Naturally, the clay pot is going to break because our clay bodies are fragile. They're, they're perishable. And um, when, when a body is perishable, it's going to die. And to die is a part of a process of living um, the eternal, eternal life. So he's going to be with the Lord very soon when, when that time comes. And it's also a time to rejoice. And I, I know we miss I know we don't like to give up. Uh, no one can understand what it is like to lose a mate that you've been with for many, many years. It's like losing part of yourself. But then when you take what you believe in as the way it should be, that that's where we all look forward to is being with the Lord Jesus Christ, then uh, pray for him, with him, and enjoy having him as long as you can in, in a natural way, and God bless you all. But uh, I, I, would, I would read that, and I would also read 1 Corinthians chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse uh, 7 through 8 on, in chapter 5, where to be absent from this body is present with the Lord. Even Paul wanted that to come to pass. He didn't rush it, and it would be a sin to rush, but uh, that's what we look forward to. And then, of course, the old standby is 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God's not going to put more on you than you all can handle real well, and being Christians, you'll do fine. He's going to be with the Father. Okay, Barbara from Florida. My name is Barbara. Thank you for all that you, your hard work. Thank you. Question. Revelations, uh, number 17, chapter 2, verse 17. What is the white stone and what is its meaning? Um, I'll give you a new name and a new white stone written. That word in the Greek, stone, is the equivalent and sister word to Revelation chapter 13, verse 18, where it says you have the ability to count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. The word count means to recognize. And what it means is God's going to give you the knowledge to be able to count, recognize, or understand who the false Christ is and to oppose him, to stand against him. That's the beauty of that wonderful verse, chapter 2, verse 17. 
he's, he even says in that verse, I think that's even more than the stone, he gives you the manna. And what is this new manna? It's the truth. God gives us that manna to teach his word, to go into the depths that when it's time, God always gives us the scripture we need. And that's God's manna. It comes from him, and what a blessing it is. Tony from California, what does God say about people that manipulate others through kidnapping, rape, and incest? Well, you know, we quoted Deuteronomy chapter 23 today. Let's quote Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 25. It's law. If a man find a girl by herself, and force her, then kill him. Okay. That's God's orders. Do him in. Uh, I, and then in verse 26, it will say, this is the same sin as murder. Uh, it, the, the, the penalty for rape is the same penalty as is for murder. Uh, well, why would father want to kill them? Well, understand our father. He wants them up there so that he can give them a trial, all right? And that's his right and his, his will and his place. Um, and that's our Father. And those things would cease happening among us. That's the whole purpose. And I'm out of time. Hey, I love you all because you enjoy studying our Father's Word chapter by chapter, verse by verse. You know, when you study his Word, it makes his day. And when you make his day, boy, is he going to make yours. You make your own choices. And I hope your choice is to love him and to follow him. We are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we have helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, you bless God. He will always bless you. Now, listen to me good. Most important, I want you to stay in his word every day. In his word is a good day, even with trouble. You know why? Because Jesus, Yeshua, he is the living word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.